evil and we'll say together this confession which may be difficult to understand or to acknowledge and um, so I just want to say it, it, it's kind of maybe some hard words that are hard to listen to and to comprehend um, I hope is that during Lent we will come more and more to understand the the truth of these words and, um, and if they hit you and really bother you, I, I would say that's a really good cue to kind of sit with them this week and what, what about that bothers you. So that's, that's my introduction and my call. God, your essence is community. We pray for the eyes to see and the courage to understand that we are not separate and independent but deeply embedded in and dependent on the systems and communities around us. We confess that instead of knowing ourselves to be members of the beautiful, bountiful creation, ones who rely on her for every breath and every meal, we have become a dominating and abusive partner. We confess that our land and our wealth come from others and that our riches leave others impoverished. We confess that our church has aligned itself with power and is complicit in slavery, the genocide of indigenous peoples, and continued imbalances in wealth and power. We confess that our governments do not adequately care for the poor, the homeless, the ill, the addicted, the abused, and immigrants blaming individuals for systemic failures, and that we do not hold elected officials and ourselves accountable. We confess that we turn away from you and do not rely on your goodness and mercy to provide for our every need. And so we indulge in worry, comp 
competition nor anger, even towards our families, friends, and co-workers. Have mercy on us, God, and forgive our failings.
hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thank you, God.
It is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ.
and to honor God in gratitude for its bounty, as we heard in the passage from Deuteronomy. But in recent, recent centuries, we've increasingly seen ourselves as over-creation, not of it. We interpret the command to be stewards of creation and other creatures as a free pass to exploit, use, and destroy creation for our own needs. And we are not, but we are not separate from creation, and our actions have been destroying the very intricate web of life that supports us, heals us, and nurtures our spirits and our bodies. Think of your own favorite outdoor place, that space that is most special to you. It might be a beach, a lake, a stream, a mountain, a patch of prairie, a garden. Whatever it is that speaks most deeply to your soul, I invite you to take a moment, close your eyes, and imagine yourself in that place.
Our nation runs on fossil fuels, coal, gas, and oil. And burning these is causing the air and the oceans to heat up. We heat our homes and our businesses, and we drive our cars. And while there are few energy alternatives, our government and corporations are still subsidizing and encouraging the use of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels also form the basis of plastics. And that use has proliferated over the last 20 years. You cannot go into a store without seeing everything encased in plastic. Commercial food production still relies heavily on chemical fertilizers and pesticides, which you guessed it, are made from fossil fuels. And these end up in streams and rivers and ultimately the ocean. Dung from meat, meat animals also runs off and ends up feeding algae blooms in the oceans. So you may drive an electric car, eat no meat, eat only organic food, but even so, you are part of the whole system which supports all of these other activities. And it's destroying the oceans, the air, and the land. Just this last week, the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, came out with a report underlining the urgent need for decisive action from world governments. The cumulative scientific evidence is unequivocal. Climate change is a threat to human well-being and planetary health. Any future, any further delay in concerted anticipatory global action on adaptation and mitigation will miss a brief and rapidly closing window of opportunity to secure a livable and sustainable future for all. In other words, if we don't act now, we're toast. That's the Reader's Digest condensed version. It goes on to say that food and water shortages are sure to come even in North America. But in President Biden's State of the Union address this week, he never mentioned climate change, except in passing around job creation. How can this be, I ask you? The greatest crisis facing humankind, and it doesn't even warrant mention from the highest elected official in the land. Let's just sit with this for a moment. We are in crisis. The creation which supports all life and all humans, all of us, is groaning and dying. Our leaders are doing nothing. We are part of the nation which has the greatest culpability for this crisis. And while others may be more directly responsible, we have assisted in making it. And we have benefited. We have not stopped it. If you have let this actually sink in, it is a crushing realization. How do we live with this? Do we swat it out of our consciousness and go on pretending that life is fine? Do we climb into a hole of guilt and depression and never come out? Do we blame the politicians and corporations who have willfully ignored science and continue to profit from running the planet into the ground? They deserve the blame, that is for sure. But to only point to them is to relinquish our own part in it. The painful but faithful way to, grieve, to move forward is to grieve, to acknowledge the terrible reality and our own part of it, to repent, to acknowledge our own sin, our own conscious and unwilling complicity in this awful situation. Yes, we're part of it, and also, we have a lot of control over the larger system. Both of those things are true. 
to lay it out all before God, daily if need be, and to ask for forgiveness, and ask for direction. What can we do? How can we fight back? How can we change? Who to talk to? Where to protest? What to do that is positive? Even now, where the, while there is no hope of escaping climate change, there is hope of change, of reconnecting to the land, of turning lawns into wildland or gardens, and, or returning it to the care of indigenous peoples, of downsizing our housing needs, of going to solar and wind power, of making a robust political public transportation system, of forcing our governments to act. We must do what we can. We must accept our responsibility. We must accept forgiveness so that we can move forward for God's sake, for creation's sake, for our sake, and the sake of future generations. Let us pray. Oh God, you created all that is and made it beautiful and wonderful and interconnected. And we and our societies have made a total mess of everything. And yet you are the God of love and forgiveness. So we beg forgiveness. We beg your cleansing spirit and we beg your movement for change in your beautiful and wonderful world that we can continue to build community and reconnect to the land and come before you with gratitude, not despair. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand if you are able or to sing together the creed.
bishops Allen and Gale, and for St. John's, especially the wardens, vestry, and search committee, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for the earth, for our human and non-human siblings suffering from climate change, and those who are working to restore health to the planet. Pray for us and for creation. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. We especially pray for the people of Ukraine. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially those we name silently or aloud. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers and thanksgivings for all other causes that you wish to offer to God. Becca. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O oh God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, in your, in above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with John and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Jesus growing in our hearts. Amen.
please stand if you are able, and we will say together the post-communion prayer on page 8 of the worship booklet. Eternal God, Heavenly Mother and Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in the world. In the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is number 147. Mm -hmm. 